Hey guys, good morning, welcome to church. If you've been with us this week, you will have known that we've started our logo competition. Um, we are starting a competition for the next week or so where you can submit as many entries as you want. Um, of a, First of all, a logo for all of our youth. So everyone in year seven up to like year 12, 13, 14 is all, all our youth. Um, so a logo for our youth group, um, one as a whole. And you can also submit names for your specific group, whether that's older youth or younger youth or something like that. Um, and the winner of this competition will shortlist a few things and I'll speak to the team and then we'll have a vote. All of the youth will get a vote on their favourite or the best um, submissions, the logos that we have. And the winner will receive a voucher, an actual cash prize voucher for somewhere of your choice, which is super cool. So if you want any more information, it's the stuff's on Facebook or um, you can connect with us next week and chat about it. Um, but we've had lots of people already submit their entries and their designs is really exciting and it's something that we can get printed we can get put on stickers on water bottles on face masks on hats on t-shirts on jumpers this is really cool and really exciting so if you're up for designing a logo um, you could use online if you wanted to you could draw it you could color it you could take a picture of it and send it in you could drop it through the door um, or you could bring it to youth on Wednesday or Thursday next week um, that would be super cool to see where we get to. Um, so have a think, submit as many as you want and we're looking forward to uh, getting on board with all your stuff. Um, if you were able to connect with us last Sunday, you would have watched Sammy's testimony video, um, part of our series called My Faith. He, so he recorded his story and shared about how he came to know Jesus, his experiences as, um, as a follower of Jesus, as a Christian and the things that he thought God was calling him into. It is super cool and that video has been watched over a hundred times already. It's um, well done, Sammy, that was awesome, and everybody's absolutely loved it. And what we have is the opportunity for anybody and everybody to do that. So if you're thinking, you know what, I'd love to record my t testimony, I'd love to record some aspects of my life with Jesus, the stories, the, the things that I've been through, um, we'd love you to do that. Get in touch with me, um, we'll get you down here, we'll record it, we'll get it on YouTube, and hundreds of people are gonna watch. And it's a little bit scary and a little bit daunting, um, but it's so encouraging and so powerful. Just think about how you felt when you watched Shami's video. First of all, you might have been really proud of him. It's like, wow, well done, mate. Um, but second, you might have been what, like, that's amazing to see what God has done in your life. Um, and God can do all of that stuff in all of our lives. So it's really important that we share our stories. We share the ups and downs that we've been through. Because other people, when they come across that, they'll be like, okay, well, that's your personal story. Um, and they'll be able to connect with God and see God working through you rather than just hearing someone say it, rather than just reading stories from thousands of years ago. Well, yes, that's really important. But when we hear about what God is doing now in our lives currently, in the people that we know, the people we have around us, that has amazing power to lead people closer to God. So if you want to do that, if you're really excited or if you're scared, um, it would be really good. And um, please get in touch. We'd love to record that story and get you on YouTube and famous sharing your testimony, sharing about God. Um, that'd be super cool. And if you were with us this week on Wednesday with the younger youth, we would have heard Jess share with us about dealing with our stress, dealing with our worries, dealing with our things that make us anxious and, um, uh, uh, and make us feel um, out of control. We did a thing called stress containers where we put everything in. This is what's stressing me. This is what's worrying me. Um, and then Jess talked about how we need to fit a tap to that container to let those things out to help deal with them and process them. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But I just want to remind you to think about the stuff we talked about with Jess and also to check out the website we've been talking about lately called Headstrong. There's loads of stuff on there. If you check it out on your phone um, or, or on your computer or something, there's loads of stuff on there about promoting our positive mental health. It's really important that we take our mental health seriously. We talk about real life, real faith in a real world. That's the catchphrase. So it's important we do that, so check it out. Um, but today I wanna talk with us for a few minutes about how we can deal with our worries and we can come across and we can have something that I wanna call God style peace. So there's a famous verse that lots of Christians know about and we might have talked about before or you might not have ever heard it. Um, it's in the book of Philippians. So if you've got your Bible, turn to that. I'm going to read it out in a few different versions. And um, we're Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7. Let me read it out. I'm going to read it out three times. So first of all, um, let me start here. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 says this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. 
and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, some big words in there like petition and thanksgiving and transcends and understanding. Like there's quite a lot of big words, but basically what they're saying is don't worry, give everything to God. Now, I want to read it on my phone in the message version. Slightly different, but kind of same impact. The verses six and seven say this. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything will come together for good, will come and settle down on you. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the centre of your life. Okay, cool. So when we give our worries to God, um, he comes and displaces the worry, he takes the place of it. So we're not to fret, we're not to worry. Kind of very similar. And then thirdly, I want to read it in the Youth Bible. If you've got one of these, you can read along. Verses 6 and 7 again says, where's it gone? Here it is. Um, Don't worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need. Always giving thanks for what you have. And because you belong to Jesus... God's peace will stand guard over you all, stand guard over all your thoughts and feelings. His peace can do this far better than our human minds. And when I first read that verse, like years ago, when I first became a Christian, I was like, wow, this is awesome. God says that I don't need to worry or fret or panic about anything. I can give it all to him. And the first time I was like, this is great. God, give you all my worries. But when I came back to it, maybe the second or third or fourth or fifth or tenth time, I started to feel like, Well, I know this is in the Bible and it says, don't worry, but I'm still worrying. And it kind of made me feel a little bit guilty. It's like the Bible says in quite a few places, yeah, don't worry about this. Don't worry, trust God, trust God. But in real life, that can be really difficult. And actually, the last thing we want to hear sometimes when we're worried is, don't worry. Or it's kind of like, if you're at home and your folks say, whatever you do, don't eat that chocolate. You really, really want to eat that chocolate. Or whatever you do, don't stay up past 10 a.m., 10 p.m. And you think, you know what? I want to stay up past 10 p.m. Sometimes when we get told not to do something, it makes us want to do something. Sometimes it makes us feel guilty. Um, the truth is, God doesn't want you to be a robot. And that's a good thing to remember. If you remember nothing of today, remember that God does not want you to be a robot. He wants you to be a human. He created you with all of your skin and all of your hair and all of your um, your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions and all of your body parts and everything on the inside and outside. He created you like that and he had a purpose for it. He doesn't want you to be a robot, but God also doesn't want you to struggle with worries. He doesn't want you to struggle with things that stress you out. Sometimes he wants you to wrestle with those things and deal with them and kind of fight those battles. He wants you to push through and grow and learn, but God doesn't ever want you to be on the floor thinking, I can't cope anymore, I'm struggling. So sometimes when we read that verse, if that's the first time, you might think, wow, that's super great. But if you've heard it a lot, you might be a little bit, man, I do worry, I feel guilty, what does God think? God doesn't want you to be a robot. God wants you to have peace and freedom. What does it say? Because you belong to Jesus. Don't worry, you belong to Jesus. But what is the way to deal with that? Okay. The Bible says, don't worry, but I do worry. What should I do? Well, these verses are super cool because actually it tells us what to do to cope. It says, starts off by saying, don't worry, don't fret, don't be anxious. Okay, okay. But, but the big word in here is but. But pray and ask God for everything you need and always give thanks to him. I don't know if you were ever trusted to go and do the shopping. Uh, Maybe you get sent to the shop around the corner or the supermarket and you have a shopping list. Very helpful to have a shopping list on a piece of paper, isn't it? But sometimes we don't. And if we're trying to remember the shopping or the things we've got to do or the things we've got to pick up or our homework or something, we might play it around in our minds. Right, get bread, get fruit, get beans. um, And we have to keep saying it and keep saying it because the moment we stop saying it, we forget to do it. I remember when I was at school, um, every day we didn't have the clip-on ties. We had the normal tie ties. It was like you had to tie them. Um, and then one, one uh, w- I think it was after the summer holidays, I was like going into year 11. I come to the first day of school and I'm get, putting my shirt on, finding my blade, finding my bits. Bit, and I was like, right, I put my tie on. And I put my tie on and I couldn't remember how to tie it. So every day for four years at school, I'd been tying my tie. But for one summer, I'd not done it. And I completely forgot how it worked. 
Or another time, I was on holiday and I had I was working with two phones, one phone from home and one phone that was working in the country. And it had a passcode on one and it had a little pattern on the other. And because I went for a day without putting in the pattern, I completely forgot the pattern. And you know what I had to do? I had to reset all my phone and download everything again. I lost a load of stuff. What this says is when we need to rem re remember something, our brain plays it over and over and over again. So whether it's a shopping list or a password or how to tie our tie, you might have an experience like this. Our brain plays it over, it brings it to the front, brings it to um, the thing that we're thinking about the most, so we don't forget. But actually sometimes what our brain does, or what we do when we have things that we're worried about or stressed about, maybe that's homework or being home alone or the friends, the drama that's going on, stuff with our, friend, our family um, or the situation in the world at the minute, the list of things that we stress about and worry about can be quite long sometimes. But what our brain does, it plays it over and over again so we don't forget. Now, the Bible says here, it says, well, if you're worried and anxious, give everything to God, speak to him about it, tell him about it. And you can have... God style peace. But actually what it doesn't say is just say it once and it will all be fine. So what I'm trying to learn to do at the moment, because there's a lot of stressful things going on, and what I'm trying to teach myself and learn from God is every time a worry comes into my head, to give it to him. So like my brain's trying to remember my list of worries for whatever reason, and I'm giving it to God. Another important thing, remember this, is God doesn't get bored of you. God doesn't get bored of what you're saying. God doesn't get bored of listening to you. If you were to say the same things to God every day because they were on your mind, God, I'm worried about this. God, I'm nervous about this. Or if you said it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, on Thursday, he's not going to turn around and say, don't you dare say that again. I've heard it. I'm bored. That's not what God does. God wants to, Jesus wants to listen to everything that's going on in your life, in your mind. So every time a worry comes to you, you can give it to him. Okay, God, Monday, I'm worried about this situation with my friend, can you help me? Tuesday, you might still be worried about that. Why not give it to him again? Because he doesn't get bored and you're not a robot. You can have that God style peace if you continue to give everything to God. So God style peace, what is that? It says in these different Bible versions, because you belong to Jesus, God's peace will stand guard over all your thoughts and feelings. His peace can do this far better than our human minds. So that's peace that goes over and beyond our human way of thinking. What's it say in a message? It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces the worry at the centre of your life. A sense of God's wholeness will come over you. Okay, and what does it say in the final version? Da, da, da. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Now, transcends is just a big fancy word for goes over, it goes through, it goes past. So God's style peace is peace that goes through our human way of thinking. So we can have that when we continue in thanksgiving, in praise, in prayer, to give our worries to God. And prayer can be out loud, prayer can be in our head, prayer can be written down, prayer can be written on a post-it note, prayer can be written on your phone, prayer can be said in the dark at night, prayer can be said out loud when no one's listening, because God is the one that's hearing you. So when we do that, his peace will come to us. And actually his peace doesn't make any sense, that's basically what the Bible says. When God's peace comes to us, it may not make human sense in our human brains. So that one really worried thing that we have in our life, when God's peace comes, we might feel actually really easy about it. Or well, God might give us some wacky way of getting over the top of it or dealing with it or processing it because God's ways are not our ways. That's what the Bible says. He does things differently to us because he's God. We're created in his image. He's not created in our image. So he doesn't do things the way that we expect him to. So hand them over to God. If you're worried and if you're reading this verse thinking, you know what, even though it says don't be worried, I'm still worried. It says hand it over to God. Give him your shopping list of worries because God doesn't get bored of you. So let's pray to finish. Um, and I hope that we can remember those key things that you're not a robot. Give your worries to God and he will give you peace that is not understandable. But thank you to God that he understands everything about us. So Jesus, we thank you for um, this verse. We thank you that you've written the Bible for us to read and to put into our lives. Lord, we give you our worries. We give you the things that are making us feel stressed and anxious, things that are distracting us in life. Jesus, we give them to you and we ask that you would give us your peace that goes beyond all of our thoughts, all of our understanding, all of our human ways of doing things. We thank you, Jesus, that you love us, that we're not robots, 
and that you never get bored of hearing what's going on in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching us this morning. Hopefully we will connect with you during the weekend. And remember, if you've got your logo ideas, get them down and get them sent in to me as soon as possible. See you soon, guys. Bye.